So with this setup, I can pretty much just show how it works. And I'm driving it. Actually, it's 11.8, which is a little bit of kickback. And that uh, little two turn, which is powering this bulb. And this is the frequency that it's running at. So you can see I'm actually PWMing the whole circuit itself at the same frequency. Right now it's at 100%. So that's what I'm getting. So if I start cranking the uh, duty cycle down, you can see the voltage goes with it. I'm just going to keep going down. Now we're already at 20%, 23% duty cycle. Keep bringing it down. Can actually bring it all the way down. See it starts to deform a little on one end and makes me wonder what's what slight difference is going on with one of those MOSFETs there or maybe one of the uh, diodes but you can see I can bring it down all the way to 2 millivolts according to this uh, scope so I wanted a, a nifty little supply that I could run uh, some, some uh, solid state Tesla coils from particularly the one I got from um, G Blue, where I wanted to see if I could crank it at closer to 40 volts, but not 40 volts DC. I was going to PWM the power rail, um, sort of like how I was talking about these SSTC interrupters, pretty much the same thing. Um, so then I thought, <clears throat> what if I used a ZVS driver? And what's cool about the ZVS driver is if you you can't PWM the oscillator part of the circuit obviously but if you PWM the power reel it works the same way um, as an interrupter so every pulse that you feed it it's going to oscillate at the frequency it wants and it's going to put out this the sign and it's going to work as it normally would but only for a, du a short duration of the cycle and in pulses and there's two benefits there when you do that one you can vary the output voltage all the way down to you know under a volt you have pretty good precision depending on your your setup um, and the other one is you can also prevent the lockup that occurs when you pull particular loads and that's only because the circuit is never staying on for longer than a a pulse and it's always cutting on and off so that's sort of the benefit there so anyway this is a ZVS driver. I've got two pretty beefy uh, MOSFETs on there pulled from a TV board. Heavy duty full bridge rectifier. Capacitor. So you can see my output transformer here has got very few turns. I mean, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about 10 on the primary. And about 10 or 11 on the secondary. And <clears throat> since this is high frequency, it needs to be a high frequency transformer like that from a flyback driver, some type of uh, fair, good high frequency ferrite. Um, I haven't played around too much with different caps, but because this is sort of a resonant circuit, it's not going to be the same deal as just your building your regular power supply. <clears throat> Uh, different variables going on there and over here on the input I've got this 30 volt this is a 150 watt uh, LED module driver right here so this is the main power 30 volts 5 amps and coming off that I got this PWM driver and man I've tried a bunch of different circuits mainly I was using triple fives and I burned out about 10 of them 
and for whatever reason I think the triple fives I had were just garbage but these uh, TL494's have held up great um, this one I used to have going through a little regulator I pulled that was supposed to be good for up to 35 volts and that was gonna kick out a solid 12 to feed the gate of this MOSFET but that regulator blew so now I'm just using this separate little supply to power the PWM and the main power is, is um, still going through this fit from the power supply so this fit is more or less switching the entire ZVS circuit on and off at the duty cycle I tell it according to the TL494 This is probably the f beefiest bulb I can find, and the it's a four four hundred and ten watt, eighty two volt. So let's see about what it takes to get that glowing. 
So to get that going, we're already pulling about 5 amps. And that, once that really starts going, man that sucker gets hot. <clears throat> but, you can see, going. Alright, so you can see the filament on that sucker. That is beefy. Still nowhere near full brightness, but that takes some serious juice to be able to get going. Alright, so that was the uh, DC output. Now I've got that off. This big boy is going straight out the AC. Just these two reds. That sucker gets bright, but you can see it starts really pulling some juice. It's kind of hard to tell, but whoo! Just gonna show. So, pulling about half an amp, no load. Not throw this guy on. Pulls it up to a few amps. So the other cool thing is this particular bulb right here. Whoo, that's hot. That's would be an uh, example of a load that would want to kick this thing into lockup because the power supply that I'd be using at the time um, just wouldn't be able to push the juice out this by the way you know 5 amps um, at 30 volts a lot of ZBS's want to pull a lot more than that so um, it's good that I'm able to PWM this whole deal because it makes that 5 to 7 amps uh, more tolerable to the circuit consumption but um, you can see that based upon the brightness of this super beefy load, you know, like a 60 watt, 40 watt, uh, 120 volt bulb doesn't really show it, but um, it doesn't put too much of a load on there. But something like this with that super fat filament in there, um, you can see I can't crank it all the way up. So I'm going to start cranking it a little bit. Maybe you can hear it. By the way, the frequency is low on this uh, right now. I've got it turned down low. I would try to match the, the ZBS frequency, but I just don't feel like doing all that right now. So I'm leaving that down. Um, I don't know. What's that, like 5 kilohertz? And you can see it's on. But it gets the brightest at a certain duty cycle so around there or so it's getting the brightest and if I crank it up beyond that you see it starts to get dim because uh, cranking it up full blast wants to set the circuit into uh, a lock up and it, that ordinarily what would probably blow the circuit so since I'm able to adjust that and not leave it at 100% on time then uh, keeps that from happening but I can also bring it down to a uh, on time to where it actually does drive it and it drives it bright as crap I just have to find that duty cycle and that's not something I'd be able to do just by adjusting the drive voltage on the ZBS I have to PWM it to do that so yeah that's pretty cool 
man, that that really puts a load on the uh, on everything. The point of this was to be able to drive this uh, Slayer Exciter at closer to 40 to 50 volts, but I knew it wouldn't take it unless I PWM'd it. So I was going to give it a low frequency PWM at that voltage, but I screwed up and over voltaged it and killed it. But before I did, it was pretty sweet. But um, I'm thinking, even though the transformer I put in there right now is only good for about 110 volts, I can uh, throw double the windings on there, use it for a uh, another solid state Tesla coil. So here goes, you know, about a couple hundred hertz or so. So that means that in itself. You know, I'm not pulling continuous load, then changing the duty cycle from there. That's how I can more or less vary my arcs. So this is how they're modulating the audio also. You can, I guess that's kind of obvious. I forgot I wanted a high current winding on there, so I wrapped a uh, two-turn secondary along with the other one. So I've got a high voltage and a low voltage, but I've yet to uh, get it switched yet. But here's the low voltage wires just popped out the front here. And I've got one side clipped on to this uh, super uh, beefy same light here and that's going to be the voltage on it and it's the power in so we'll start cranking it up so all the way up 100 percent duty cycle it's about 27 volts that's what's coming out of that two turn winding so that's going to be variable up to about 27 volts um, that I can get high current out of. So say if I want to uh, rectify that, be real easy to do that. And I guess one way to show would be, you know, for example, um, it's real easy for it to pop one of these 25 amp fuses and so unloaded about 650 milliamps doing a, with the load on it's a little over a couple amps on this winding and you can see the voltage drop unloaded about 27 loaded about 26 so doesn't have much problem uh, cranking the juice in that bad boy. It's obviously not getting it full bright because uh, it says it's an 82 volt bulb and I'm only running it at uh, 26 or so. But just you can see the amount of current. Here we go. Yeah. Pop that out real quick. 